Let's see. We got sound. There we go. I think we're good and ready. Can you hear me now? Give me uh, some thumbs up and let's make sure that you can see me and hear me. There we go. Oh. I think we're good and ready. I can hear myself. I just need to can mute you hear me now? Give me a myself. And let's make Sorry. Sure you can see me. There we go. I think I've muted everyone. All right, perfect. All right. Of course, end of the year is always super busy. So again, I'm sorry that I was a little tardy, but let's get this show on the road, shall we? All right. So today we're going to talk a little bit about our year end wrap up. We did so many products and pro or projects this year that um, I've gathered favorites over here to the side and you can see it's a beautiful array. <laughs> it's a super messy array is what it is. But you know what? It's the end of the year. So I'm sure that yesterday from your, um, from your uh, holiday extravaganzas that you still have wrapping paper and stuff all over your living room, I hope, but yes. Uh, so that's how my bead table looks as well. Okay, so I've pulled some um, kind of fun projects that I'm going to talk to you about a little bit. And if you're new to joining us over here at beadshop.com, you can find all of our projects and our products over on the website at, of course, beadshop.com. And uh, if you go to our homepage, you guys, and you go under uh, projects, there's a couple of things I wanted to point out. Um, we have uh, things broken down by earrings, by bracelets, by necklaces. Um, we've got a tassel section. We've even got a technique section, kind of an everything else section where all the random stuff goes in. And then we have our lookbook collection. And I wanted to point out the lookbook collection because we have um, just a whole wealth of great ideas in our lookbook uh, collection, which is really awesome. Our design team is incredible and they have worked really hard on so many of the lookbooks. Um, Ali Mori has headed those up with the design team of Faye, Danielle, and Kim. And you guys have really made some beautiful things. So if you have not um, downloaded those lookbooks, I recommend that you do that. It's a good kind of ready for 2020 um, overview. And then under our um, learning section, which is right next to projects on our homepage, um, our learning section has skill builders, which are great. And I'm going to talk about one of our favorite skills today here on the broadcast. Um, and we have a couple of really good learning um, pieces that were written. Um, Brittany wrote um, the uh, Stitionary. Janice worked on the Needlepedia. So those are really great resources for threads and what needles you should use with threads. Emily's done all of our blank design templates. We used one last week um, in our um, in our Super Duo earring um, broadcast. There's the Super Duo one, the Super Duo one there, which is great. And then uh, of course we've got our YouTube channel and Seed Bead School, which is uh, Emily has more Seed Bead Schools planned for 2020, which I know you're really happy about. So, uh, okay, so I'm gonna start off by showing some of these projects that are over here to my left. And one of the ones that I think uh, you guys did a great job with, but I wanted to point out, this is our opulent collar project. And I love these collars. And Kim Golius from our design team, Kim has made a really cool piece. It's in our one of our lookbooks, and I'm going to be tackling it um, <clears throat> in the new year. 
and we're going to be playing around with it. It's a version of this opulent collar where we stitch the beads and stuff over the top. It's going to be pretty cool. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, if you haven't checked out the opulent collar, it's a fun, fast, um, I think kind of interesting way to use these kind of big, what we call collar components. And these components themselves are made in a really cool manner. They're actually um, recycled bits of stone left over from the stone cutting process. And you can see there's bronzite. Whoops, sorry about that, you guys. I hope I didn't, um, I hope I didn't, no, it's okay, everyone, everything's good. Um, it's a, um, a really fun, um, way to kind of recycle and reuse. So this is lapis and bronzite and this lapis uh, stone and the bronzite stone have been um, uh, put in resin and then the resin itself is cut. So it's a pretty cool way of kind of recycling from the stone cutting process and I just love them. I've fallen in love with them. So this is that stone collar. Um, I also wanted to mention, and so many of you have made it over on the bead table, have made this piece, um, and uh, we've even put a couple of them in our lookbooks, of course is this West County Cuff. And it looks, it's really a cuff, as you guys can remember. Um, it was one that was really daunting for me, <laughs> but daunting no more. Through um, really fabulous uh, instruction from Brittany. Um, this was her piece that she did. Um, I was able to conquer this as well. So if you haven't done a West County Cuff, and now that hopefully your holiday beading is done, uh, you'll be able to tackle one of these for you. So West County Cuff is a good way to go. I also wanted to circle around to our kimono cord. Um, Faye from our design team, Faye has used uh, the kimono cord in the lookbooks to just really uh, with really great results. Um, this was a piece that I did. I had it up here. Let me um, click and see if I can find the exact date for you guys. If you go to <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> pardon me, our bead shop live uh, project uh, page, page, you'll be able to see. Really, uh, sorry, I don't know really what is. Results. Um, this is a piece that I did. Sorry, I'm getting some feedback from um, click and mute. See if I can find the exact date Let me that. see. Sorry, you guys. <coughs> I don't know <coughs> what <coughs> is playing here. Our bead shop live That's project. new. You will be able to see. Let me see. There we go. I think it was from our broadcast. <laughs> oh, I know what it is. Sorry. I always forget, you guys. We. Uh, also broadcast, I don't always forget, but sometimes I forget that we also broadcast our uh, live, uh, during our live broadcasts. Uh, we uh, broadcast it right on our uh, Facebook Live homepage, so um, you can uh, watch it if you don't have um, if you don't have a, uh, you don't want to watch it on YouTube or you don't want to watch it on Facebook, you can go right to our broadcast to Bead Shop Live uh, and watch it right on the page. And that's what it's showing to me. And that's why I heard myself talking. I do see that one of you is watching it on our Bead Shop Live homepage, which is kind of cool. But let me get back to this kimono cord. It was the kimono cord wrap on June 5th. I did this one. Um, and it's a really fun uh, way to utilize that kimono cord. Um, I, I like it uh, a lot. And so not only are you using the kimono cord as a wrap, but we've actually done some laddering here with the Checkmates tiles and some size eight seed beads, which I adore. So you can find that one. Um, on the Facebook Live page. Then, or the Bead Shop Live page. Um, so uh, I have a couple of other, here's another one of that wrap with this guy here. I also, since last week you loved the herringbone that we did so much, we did a herringbone wrap um, with Emily 
uh, I think it was towards the beginning of the year, it was Herringbone Ladder on 327.19. And if you were digging working with the Super Duos um, from Free Tip Friday from that Super Duo Herringbone Wrap um, Ago, um, we have it under our skill builders. We have a great um, step by step. Um, I believe that Drea shot. I'm looking over there. It's how to herringbone ladder with super duos. So it's a really good resource if you want to jump in and do some herringbone laddering. So uh, so if you have some super duos left over from those projects, get to it. That'll be a good one. And then <clears throat> over here in my pile of messy projects here. We have macrame with a twist, and this is gonna kind of lead up to what I'm gonna be showing you guys today. This was a little macrame project that I did at the beginning uh, of the year. I'm gonna look for the date here. It's on the Bead Shop Live page. It's also under our bracelet projects, and it's called peyote with a twist, and I did it on, or macrame with a twist, I'm sorry and it was on April 17th of this year. And it's also a really good one because I used the 0.4 millimeter Chinese knotting cord with it. And I use these twist beads. Some of these we don't carry any longer because there was a finite um, amount of them, but you could toss any bead in there, including this spindle would look great with macrame with the twist. So. Uh, that's another good one that you may want to revisit. But finally, I wanted to share two, we've kind of been on a Bollywood kick this year, and one of the basic, um, kind of the, a bead shop basic, a basic stitch, kind of a basic um, thing that we use all the time, a flat knot. And I did a variation of it. I did this on a free tip Friday. This one over here that my thumb is touching. This one's called cardamom. And I did kind of this fun um, kind of flat stitch variation. And then Janice did this one. It's called New Bollywood. And it has a variety of like padres. And she also did that <clears throat> macrame variation there. And so what I did, and you know when I do these broadcasts, and you know, since this is the day after Christmas and after a Hanukkah night, and it's Boxing Day for many of you around the world, <clears throat> pardon me, um, I thought it'd be fun to do something a little more laid back. So for the demo today, I'm going to switch over and you guys are going to see what I have in front of me here and we'll see I have what a surprise not rehearsed this at all so it may all end in tears you never know what's going to happen but I also know you guys like it when I just do some things off the cuff so the um the Facebook live broadcast and the free tip Friday broadcast are kind of merging all together in one and so I went through, as I was walking through fulfillment, um, I grabbed what we had, uh, some good ideas on the wall, and I'm going to show you, uh, just do a quick little demo, and it might spark some creativity. I'm doing such creative, wonderful things with a lot of our ideas this holiday season, but I thought this would be a good thing. You could go stash diving in your stash. Or I also wanted to um, remind you that um, it's a good thing that, uh, it, it, especially now that we're having our end of year sale um, at beadshop.com, it's a good time to stock up on all of those basics. So when inspiration strikes, like it did me this morning, um, so, um, so in your stash, you may want to grab yourself some Ceylon, and if you don't have it, if you haven't worked with it yet, and this, as you guys know who have been watching the past few weeks, this is that precious little um, spool of Ceylon, regular Ceylon in wine 
that's been hanging out. So we'll see if I use that, but I added that to the mix. Some 0.5 millimeter leather. This is Distressed Mahogany, but we carry the 0.5 Distressed in a lot of different sizes. We've been using this 0.5 to do some macrame and to do some fun things with. So I would pick some of this up to grab, uh, to have in your stash. Also, these pie discs, these are the 30 millimeter size. And I grabbed them in kind of a pleasing color palette. Pyrite, Tiger's Eye, Sodalite, and then this Ocean Jasper um, right here. I think that's the Ocean Jasper that I grabbed. Um, <clears throat> and let me just double check on that. Now I'm worried that I didn't grab the right one. Let me just make sure. Or Janice, I know you can confirm it. But of course, in my rush to get them in my basket, I thought, oh, you guys will know. <laughs> I'll know what it is. I'll remember. You know how it is, how you never, ever remember. I've got the pie up here on my screen. And scrolling through. Yeah, it's Ocean Jasper. I knew what I was talking about, you guys. Come on now. <laughs> I know my stones. And uh, so I grabbed these guys. Now these are great if you don't, we carry the pie in a couple of different sizes, right? And, um, sorry, I was a little out of frame there. Um, but it's also great to have these guys in your stash because you could do these as earrings because they're th small, uh, light enough to use. But they also make great centerpieces if you're not into the giant, uh, well, not giant, but the 40 millimeter pie that we have. Okay, so I've grabbed some of those. Um, this was a piece from the New Bollywood, and you can see Janice used one of our jade rings for the center, and then she just tied on some uh, Chinese knotting cord, and then just went to town with our Matubos, which I've grabbed some here. This is the Crystal Bronze Luster. And then I grabbed a couple of ADOTs. This is the 8-2035 Metallic Khaki, and then the 8-461. Both of those are good. So like any project, oh, and I grabbed some CKC, or as it's known, Chinese Knotting Cord. I grabbed it in Spring Leaf and in this Teak, okay? So who knows what, what will all shake out with this, okay? So, <clears throat> pardon me. So uh, this is when we're starting a project here or when I'm trying to figure out what my next move is for Bead Shop Live or we're figuring out, you know, a new project to debut for you. This is kind of how we do it. You know, we come in, I jump in, and I just take a look at what we've got available to use and maybe what we haven't used in a while. And I'll tell you, this um disc this uh tiger's eye disc i don't know if i've ever used it so i'm going to use it for this and i'm going to um grab this um 0.5 uh millimeter um the mahogany distressed mahogany and i think i'm going to match it up with this teak four millimeter Chinese knotting cord, maybe the teak, maybe that'll look good. Or I could match it up with, maybe I'll bring this in later, I don't know. But this is what I'm gonna start. And so this was really my inspiration, was this piece and then this cardamom series. I saw them hanging on the wall, kind of in our, our big wall archive. And I thought, you know, this is a stitch, we're so used to this flat, um, macrame flat knot, but we haven't done a lot of this kind of macrame flat knot variation. I think I call that the basket stitch is what I call it. Um, and I think it lends itself, it's a little different. Can you see, <clears throat> let me grab another one of these guys. Nope, that's the same. Uh, you can see it here, the macrame flat knot, and it's the one that I just used in with my kit. Um, so you can see it's a little lacier, a little bit of a more open work with that, okay? So <clears throat> let me switch back over. I'm watching the Facebook feed and not my live feed. There we go. I want to make sure that I'm still in frame for you guys there. So taking the inspiration from this guy here and from these guys here, 
and maybe later on I also wanted to show you I've got it here this is Allie's fall gourds wrap you can find it over on the website but <clears throat> I wanted to show uh, just a reminder of these closures or this connector here how the flat knot comes around and creates a loop and then Allie also then looped her flat leather to that one as well. So I may take a little bit of inspiration from there. And you can see again, more flat knot inspiration here. Okay. So <clears throat> let's get this show on the road by just attaching one of these discs to the board. And I know you're all as eager as I am to see how this is going to wash out. But again, I think that this show really is all about like the basics. You know, what take the techniques that you learned in 2019 from us here at beadshop.com and make sure that you're stocked up on some of your favorites. So when inspiration strikes, as I hope it is striking me as we speak, um, you can just jump in and design and create. So I'm going to just use a little piece, I have a little piece of scrap leather here, then I'm going to put the disc through and put this e chain coin, again one of my favorites, and I'm just going to use this to attach this to this board. Okay, and I do that, again some basics, this deep dish design tray with the velvet pad insert, and this clamper here. And speaking of basics, I saw someone ask about our thread burners still on back order, you guys. Make sure you will know the fastest way um, that you will grab yours is if you put yourself on the notification list on the product page. And if you do that, as soon as they go back into stock, it triggers an email to land in your email box. And jump on it when you see it because honestly I know they'll be back out of stock quickly because uh, so many people have been waiting for them so it, maybe this is a bracelet maybe this is a wrap who knows I don't want this to be super long though to deal with a lot of thread and if I'm replicating kind of what Janice he did here in the new Bollywood you can see she actually did it as a bracelet so let's Hmm. Let's just cut a piece. I'm going to cut it doubled from the board like that. Uh, this is a 14 inch board across the board here. So I've doubled that. So this is about 28 inches. This is just from our um, leather scrap bin, but it's the 0.5 millimeter um, uh, distressed mahogany is what I've used here. So I'm going to put this through, okay, and then maybe <clears throat> I want to do, I don't know, what color do I like? I think I like this. If we go all brown, will you be able to see it? Maybe I'll use the green instead because of a little bit of contrast, you'll be able to see it. I think I've got one open right over here, so let me grab it. Bear with me here just a second. There we go. And I'm going to cut about, I don't know, since I don't really know how long this is going to be, I'm going to go once, twice times, maybe three, maybe four times. And I'm using the point four, okay? My idea with this, and it's starting to evolve as I think about it, is that I wanted um, maybe several strands coming off of this pie because the pie is so, uh, it's kind of bigger than that disc, that jade ring that Janice used. So I thought I'd go a little bit heavier. Notice also what I wanted on the top here was just the leather to show. So I will um, put that 0.4 millimeter under that pie 
and under uh, over the pocket and under the I Ching coin, so I can um, so it hides it. Though you can put it up if you want a little bit of color, but that's what I'm doing. Now <clears throat> I can. What Janice did here was she tied a knot uh, with that with all the strands. I could use a like a transition crimp tube. I could tie some knots or whatever. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and maybe to hold these all together, I might do something a little different. I have these Matubos. Let's see if this, the Matubos, can you see what a large hole they have? So maybe I'll, um, I'll just put these on to hold it all together. There's many ways that you can do that though, right? So when you're designing and creating like this, off literally off the cuff, if you have a good amount of stuff in your stash, um, the 2.0 or the 2 watt Matubos are a great thing to have because um, they have such a big hole and they're kind of a small bead that they accommodate everything very nicely. So if you need something like this, that accommodates a lot of strands. There we go. Just like that. Hmm. Now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this leather as my base strand because it's heavier, right? So I'm gonna click it into my board. And then I'm gonna use this guy. Now, I hope I remember how to do this stitch, but I think I do. <clears throat> so what you do, basically, you can see, and doing this with two colors would be nice as well, because if you do one color on one side, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Let me get another drink of my water here. Um, it's dry. We have the heat up in the Facebook room, and so it's a little dry in here. There we go. Sweet coffee will fix anything. On this side, you can see we have one color, and this side, there's a second color, so there's a contrast. Here, if I use the same color, you're going to see it blends into each other, kind of like this. So, <clears throat> what I do for this one, a regular flat knot, or a regular macrame flat knot, you would go, I'll do one of those for you, just so you can see the difference. I would start with my P, my loop here on my right hand side. I bring my left strand over the leg of that P, under the center leg, and up through the center. Okay, and then I do the second thing on the other side, make the Q side, over the tail, under the center, and back up. And we have a good skill builder for that. Okay, I'm going to get it a little tighter so you can see this. But this uh, basket weave stitch what it does is we just make our loop like this with our P and then we come up through that loop and tie it up. Then I do the second thing on this side, my loop, put it through and tighten it up, push it up. Okay. I'm going to do a couple of these at speed. Whoops, it's not a square knot. So I just do one side and I go back and forth between. It's not as easy to see with the same colors here. But as it gets, and this is with the 0.4 CKC. I'll get in a little bit tighter and I'll show you the difference between the 0.4 and the 0.5. So can you see the series of knots? Whoops, you really can, that's super tight. Can you see the series of knots that's there? I'll go one more set of knots here so you can see this sew up close. Here, make that loop. Go under that center. and up through the side. 
you guys are chatting over on you, YouTube how these pie discs are so old school bead shop. It's so true. We've been using these discs for so long. So can you see how that looks, the 0.4 versus that's the 0.5. It's a little bit thicker. Okay. So, but especially if, and I think this idea is starting to evolve in my brain, evolve, not involve, uh, evolve in my brain here, that I could have this be kind of a multiple strand kind of an item here. So I think the point four is nice to use. Now, if I wanted to, I don't know, add a little more interest to this, I'm going to start by, and you've seen me do this before, I'm going to add a little zap glue to my baggie that I had my ear wires in from the broadcast on Friday. I'm so glad that so many of you like those super diamond earrings that I made. They were really fun to make. And it was so great to see you guys make <clears throat> so many last minute holiday gifts using those. That was my goal. It was really fun to see that. But again, some more basics that you need to have in your stash if you don't have them already. I'm going to let those tips dry with that zap glue. If you don't have them already, I would make sure that you have a couple of tubes of zap glue, that you have um, some GS Hypo Cement, and you have a couple of small tubes of E6000. Um, those different glues are the glues we use here at Bead Shop, and it will, um, you'll always have one handy. You'll have a, like we used to say, remember when you used to wear nylons to work all the time? I don't know if you guys remember that, but my grand would always say, have a pair and a spare, right? So that's how it is with the glue. You have a pair or just a single and a spare glue. So you never run out because it's a bummer when you're trying to make something and your glue isn't working. Okay, so I'm going to grab, I put some beads in my little triangles. Again, another um, staple to have in your in your stash. I'm going to clip using my old school thread snips. Another staple. So I have a nice um, slanted, a nice diagonal end. And let's do this. Usually I, I would do a larger bead on here, but this 0.4, I forget how small this 0.4 millimeter um, Chinese knotting cord is. So I'm going to put one on the end here and on the end here. Go in there. There we go. And let me tie one of these basket weave knots <clears throat> with the, the, the beads on them. It looks really nice beaded. So I just put that, that one on there and I just slide it up. And it lets the leather show a little bit more as you're doing this. So see that? You can see that leather peeking through. Get it a little tighter and I'll do a couple more. And then I'll show you what I would do next for some other strands coming off this thing. And sometimes just giving yourself the permission to play with this, like I'm giving myself the permission to play on camera. Um, I wanted to see you guys today, but we've been, again, busy with holiday orders and year-end stuff here at beadshop.com that we didn't have a whole lot of time to plan a year-end project. So I thought just sharing some of our favorite year-end, which uh, we did in those guys, and then showing you just kind of a little bit of a riff on a project 
would be kind of a fun thing. So look at how in that basket weave, how those beads are helping to show some of that leather in there. You could always pop up to a 0.5 millimeter in your Chinese knotting cord. You know, Brittany's working on a project. She's going to be here on the 8th of January. <clears throat> she was so funny when she was working on the project and we were talking about the different colors she could use and stuff like that. She said, okay, I'll just go to my Chinese knotting cord stash and I think I'll be able to, to figure it out. Well, thank goodness she had that stash in hand so she could whip out these samples nice and fast and easy. So if you don't have a stash of Chinese knotting cord, you might want to grab some. I think it's such a versatile, uh, a versatile material. So you can see here's our, um, here's our, these guys here, right? Our little 11 knots. So I'm going to hold this in place with, well, let me make some plain basket stitch here. Let me do that. And then I'll hold it in place with some flat knots. But you want to watch the um, project that I did. It's called the cardamom bracelet. And I think it's, it's under projects as well. Um, but it shows you some of the variations on this where I put more beads around the sides. But you can see how truly fast and easy this stitch, this stitch is. Yeah, and as I said, I'm still seeing that, that um, chat over there about the thread burners. We've been waiting. I've been talking to them, but it's just hard to say. Sometimes they have an ETA, but that ETA is not correct. So hang in there. The thread burners will be back. Don't you worry. And I'm using an 11 knot with this 0.4 millimeter CKC. If I were using a 0.5, now I'm going to put some flat knots in here. If I were using the 0.5, I would probably pop up to an A-dot. Okay, and so see that series of flat knots kind of holds everything in. Now I could just repeat this Matubo pattern since I've got one over there and I've got one. Let me widen this up so you can see it. <clears throat> and the Matubos fit nicely two strands of that 0.5. There's that Matubo. Now there's room. You could go out over the sides, but I think there's room, especially with these zapped ends, if you didn't want your thread to go outside the bead. Okay. <clears throat> So let's get another strand of something going on here, okay? Here is that 0.5 millimeter again, and we sell it in four yard lengths. So I'm gonna do four yards, of, or four, um, four lengths of the board, four 14 inch lengths of the board. Um, so one, you know, you can get one spool of that let me do this. Actually, I wanted it this length. So I actually needed them cut. I didn't need them continuous. So one two length piece. And then a second two length piece, 28 inches. And I'll come in here, and this time this cord is thick, 
I'll knot it. Overhand knot. and tighten everything up. Give each one of those a little pull. And I'll be honest, I feel like that knot looks a little bulky, so I'm going to take it out. What are our options here? We can silk wrap it. We can get a transition and crimp it. We can double check that the Matubo will fit. I just want to double check that here. <clears throat> Big hold beads for your stash. They're really close. I'm going to see. I'm going to show you. This is going to be a good opportunity for you. To learn. Do a diagonal cut on each of these. Then I'll see if I can get these through. I like the uniformity of where, how they would look, but sometimes you have to finagle it a little bit. So let me show you. Let's put in one. That one works well. Let's put in the second one. That goes through. No problemo. Make sure they're all going the same way. See how I have putting my finger underneath that Matubo to make as much room as I can for that little tunnel? Now here's the thing. I can see some air, and with my diagonal cut, my angle cut piece, it's so close. Come on now. Sometimes there it goes. Sometimes you just have to tell the beads. You know what I'm going to say. Who is boss? Make sure that this isn't a lost tangled cause and let's just really carefully because you don't want to mess up your cord you really carefully just pull everything in any tighter than this and it would be a no-go and let me make sure I've got one really short piece here so that doesn't bode well so I'm gonna have to Scoot everything back down. Figure out what that short piece is. I think it's this one. Pull some of the extra from the other side. Pull it down. There we go. And try not to get everything twisted underneath like I did here. Let's see when I pull it up. Yep, good. See how it's not twisted on that side at all. Okay, that looks cleaner and better, don't you think, than a knot? Now, since I did basket weave on this one, <clears throat> let's take a look at what basket weave would look on this one. There's no need. I'm not going to start with any macrame flat knot and I'm just going to start and come in and up and then do my P side, do the loop and up. And after you do each side of the basket, you kind of have to make sure everything is tight enough. So there's that one. So see that there? There's the P side underneath the center and with that same leg, pull it up. Okay. There we go. We can see how that's looking. 
so it's here. And let's add a bead, shall we? Since I've been going strong with those Matubos, One, two, one, two. I think I need one more on this side. One, two. I think I need one more on this side. And I'll do one more on this side, just so I've got a little more space here. But once you're familiar with the knots and the technique, you can just kind of go for it. It didn't center these cords very well, but I think I've got enough. So not only do you need basics in your beading stash, you need basics in your technique stash as well. Get that off this side. Okay. Pretty. Then we'll just keep going for it. Just loop and through. This stitch could not be faster. Okay. <clears throat> so now if this were a bracelet, I'm going to take this off, <clears throat> take a look and see what it looks like here. Oh, go back up there. So I might think about, you know, well, how's this going to look? How's this going to look on the wrist? I think it'll actually look pretty darn good. I think since this is such a thicker, let me get in frame there, since this is such a wider stitch, I would do that same maybe green stitch on this side over here. Okay, and then I do the same coming out the other way, even though my, there we go, I think my characters were upside down. There we go. And so um, you could also just bead, you know, do a beaded strand in there and do two asymmetrical strands, that would look good. And I also grabbed, where did they go? These guys here. I wanted to show you um, using these spindle beads, which I just love. Again, another good stash must have. I'm going to come in on this side here, and I'm going to use this time that wine Ceylon. And you know, as I work on pieces like this, and I think about design, and I think about you know asymmetry versus symmetry and stuff like this, planned asymmetry for me. Um, is okay sometimes, right? You just want to not worry about it too much. And, you know, this is all easily cut up a bowl and stuff, but sometimes a real planned bit of asymmetry will elevate your design quite a bit. So I'm going to put these on the center. I'm going to do this side, as I said, with that regular. CKC. And I think I want it doubled. So I cut one long piece, but I actually want two of them. <clears throat> and I'm going to put these guys through. There we go. And this time what I'll do is I'll get my center strands.
connect them down to my box here for the moment using my clamper. And I feel like this is also a lesson in pulling your materials in a palette that's pleasing because then you can just use whatever is on your board without worrying too much about what's going to match and what isn't. Are those little side? That I don't like the look of. I thought I could just macrame it, but I think I'm going to tie it off. Come here, all. If you've mistied, just get that all in there, pop that knot open. Not the end of the world. Literally, not the end. Maybe to make this more symmetrical with that side, let's put, it seemed like that Matubo was working for me earlier, so why deviate from the norm here? That'll make everything sit correctly. So let's do it. I've got some Matubo sitting right here. This is that, um, what color is it? It is, I know what you're thinking. Kate, what color is it? It's the Crystal Bronze Luster. And this is a good, look how good, now that tamed all of those strands together. Let me go ahead and clip that back on the board. There we go. Find my center two again, which I think are these. Clip them on the board. <clears throat> there we go. Bring that up. Oops, switch sides though, because I don't want to twist my threads. Now, let me just add a couple, like I did before, just to make all the threads to tame them all. I've done one macrame flat knot. Maybe I'll do two macrame flat knots. Now, I'm really digging this look right here. Okay? The one with the 11 knots. So, let me repeat that on this side because it'll be a motif that I'm repeating. Yeah, I'm not a super matchy matchy kind of a gal and um, if I wanted to take the time to add zap glue to the ends of these it would make this stringing maybe a little faster but I'm not going to take, I don't, at least I don't think, you know what, <laughs> I said I wouldn't but I've got some on here so I fold it over my little baggie so it's not dry yet. Let's just make that self needle on the end. It'll make your life and my life a lot easier. And since I folded over the little baggie, my zap hasn't cured in the air yet. So I still have a little bit to make that needle. There we go. It dries so quickly when it's out in the air. There we are. I don't want to glue it to my finger. Side clip it. There we go. So my size 11 seed bead will stop giving me this sass. All right, <clears throat> so let's make a couple of these P and Q basket weaves. There's the Q side. You know, and I know that some of you take some time off during the holidays. It's a good time to experiment with things that, with designs that might evolve into new things, into 2020. You know, I like at the beginning of the year, I would just like to take a little bit of time and take a look at the things that I've designed the previous year, try and maybe use some of those elements, but also try and push myself a little bit creatively to come up with some new ideas. You know, it's kind of a cliche to think about, oh, what's your 
New Year's resolution or, you know, what are you going to do or change or do differently after the new year? But I think, um, you know, even spending a day in, you know, in your studio or at your dining table or where your spare bedroom, wherever it is that you do your um, bead work and just do a little bit of creating and playing like with this you know even though I have all of you guys watching I'm not too concerned about you know like oh how am I gonna finish this oh does it look right sometimes you just have to take the bowl by the horns or in this case the beads by the thread and just make it happen and you can see this is kind of even though it's asymmetrical it's all in the same color family I'm incorporating some techniques from one side to the other, so I'm not really stressing about it, right? So, you know, sometimes it's great to plan, but others, I think, especially with color, and if you were watching the show that Cynthia and I did, our creative explosion when Cynthia was here, um, that little bead just doesn't want to go where I tell it to. Come on. We talked a lot about color and about using color in your design and about using color as a starting point. So I think um, trying that out with color, just using color as your guide, will be a good way. To get your creative juices flowing. There we go. That last little 11 knot's giving me trouble, isn't it? Well, when in doubt, I'm just going to take these two out. Maybe I did it incorrectly. There we go. Nice and tight. Get that one through. Slide it up. Sometimes if you slide that 11 up all the way to the top, there you go. There it went. It doesn't look right. Don't be afraid to take it out and just redo that stitch. It's okay. Get that 11 knot all the way to the top there. And then the knot, whoops. Use that all to get it into place. It's always those last little ones that give you the sass, isn't it? There we go. And I'm going to lock it in with a couple of flat knots. <clears throat> Now I had these spindles here that we were looking at. The spindles, especially if you want a project to go fast, these spindles have a lot of length to them. So especially on a bracelet, let's see if we can get two Strands. I think I can. I haven't zap glued these ends. But I do have, let's see if it'll go with a collapsible line needle. Another good thing to have in your stash. Sometimes you just need that little help. There we go. Yeah, that doesn't like it, does it? Still have my baggie with my zap. Can't go wrong. Soak that in. Pull it. There we go. Cut that angle. <clears throat> I'm 
Let's see if I can get those two. I don't know maybe that bead when in doubt try a second bead and if the second bead doesn't work then it wasn't meant to be there's one nope too small so what I could do when life hands you a bead quandary. I'm going to put some 11 aughts on this. I know you're waiting to go, what is Kate going to do with this? Just don't think about it too much, right? When you switch gears. It's okay. And maybe you'll switch gears and it'll be an amazing discovery. Or it'll be a mess. But it's the fun of the adventure. That bead is not very good. I'll get another one. I've got some zap on my fingers now, so I can't feel the beads. <laughs> so I'm going to put some 11 knots here over the top. Looks like I need three more. There we go. One more. The 11 knot I'm using is the 11 2006 matte metallic bronze. It's very pretty. I'm going to put this back on the board so it's tight. And we're going to try and get this to sit nicely. Bring it nice and tight. I'm going to bring these threads around. And let's see if I can tie a nice macrame flat knot below it. Let's see how that looks. Or maybe these threads want to come on either side of it. That's okay too. I could cover all the threads with seed beads. There's one pair and I'm going to do one more pair. There we go. So these want to sit on top, so I'm going to let them sit on top. I'm going to get in a little tighter so you guys can see this whole extravaganza that I've got going on here. Getting a little... Sorry. If I can get in... There we go. A little tighter there, and you can see that. Let me turn it. Yeah, I kind of love the beads strung along the top too. And I like seeing the threads, actually, for this. And I could come in to tie this into this side. I could come in and do another leather side like this and do that there and I could even do these three I could <clears throat> put this one asymmetrically on this side too that would work and then 
What I would do to close all of this up, what I might do is I might bring everything together um, and do some macrame over the top. So let me reverse this back. And I'll just give you guys kind of a little bit of a hint to do this, but I know that you can see that pretty well. Let me connect this side onto this board. And then when you bring all of your threads in together, you'll have a lot of threads, you know, to be able to work with. What I would do again is maybe I would put everything together like this. Maybe I'd end it in a crimp or you could silk wrap but you could come in and I would put maybe some little beads or do some kind of a taper at the bottom But I could come in and just macrame over the top of that to bring it all together. I could also use one of our 5mm ribbon fold over crimps for this. So uh, then that fold over crimp just has a loop. It would look nice. And again, you can see how Allie did it. You could get a big hold bead put everything through and make a loop that way and connect it to a clasp or however you want to do it. Okay. So it just depends, you know, you want to, I, I, I give you permission in this year end roundup. Um, you could attach it to chain, you know, there's a lot of fun ways that you can pull this together. This actually doesn't look too bad. I like how it looks. Then you could even go into, I don't know, doing some laddering or something here. But don't don't be hemmed in by designs or patterns. You know, go into, grab some of your basics, right? And if you don't have basics, know that you need to grab some Chinese knotting cord is a great basic to have, or this is um, regular Ceylon but your Chinese knotting cords in some colors, just pick up favorite colors that you like, right? I use some 30 millimeter discs here. I use that I Ching coin over at the top. Some Matubos with the large holes are a great way to go. Um, using up some of your spindles, again, with that long, um, with that long bead gives you a lot of bang for your buck lengthwise and time-wise as you're making. And then of course some good basics with seed beads. ADOTS, this is the 8-641. And what else did I use? I used the 11 aught. I didn't even use this ADOT yet, but I think I will somewhere in here. The 11-2006 is the other one. And then there's another one here. Um, 8-2035, which is what I use there. So again, remember, a harmonious color palette makes for a creative explosion on your beadboard, right? You know that if everything visually goes together here in this um, mix, you'll be able to create something pretty cool, um, you know, by just picking and choosing and designing on the fly. So I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of crazy year-end wrap-up. Um, do remember, check out some of these projects. Um, again, that uh, some of my favorites from the year-end wrap-up, the kimono cord, another good thing to have in your stash. Download those lookbooks to really see some. Faye did a beautiful piece with that. Um, we have, of course, the West County Cup. This one's Brittany's that she did. And now that the hustle and bustle of the holidays are almost coming to an end, not quite uh, for some of you, but as soon as you have some time, sitting down and making one of these West County Cups for yourself would be amazing. 
Um, and of course, I love my opulent collars. And you can use this opulent collar. You know, you could string this part here and then do simpler beads at the back if you wanted to as well. Just depends on what you like. <clears throat> of course, I grabbed the macrame with the twist. Another good thing to use those spindles in, you know, it would be a cool one to do. And this new Bollywood. Take a look at Janice's new Bollywood project, which is here. It's a great riff on our classic Bollywood. And then, of course, my cardamom bracelet. Where are the rest? Here they are from that series right here which would be good. So whatever, oh and of course last but not least, don't forget about the herringbone um, wrap portion, this herringbone. And we have a great skill builder in our skill builder um, section on beadshop.com. So um, yep, I use five millimeter leather. It looks like there was a, prod a, a question for that um, as well. So it was the 0.5 millimeter is what I used. So as always, you guys, you can find all of the information on our projects and our products from the broadcast. And you guys, if you have not been getting your newsletters, please uh, jump in and make sure you're signed up on our newsletter on the homepage of beadshop.com. I made for, um, a, it's a five day giveaway bunch of really beautiful mixes. So we had one for yesterday. It was called uh, Rudolph. Today's, I believe it's called Sugar Plum. Today we're on the Sugar Plum mix that I did. And it's beautiful. We have mixes, mix giveaways with purchase uh, through the end, uh, through Sunday, I believe. So if you make an order today, and I want to make sure and get the, um, bear with me here, because I'm gonna get the code, if I wanna get the code right here for you guys. If you make an order today, uh, till midnight, uh, we have a limited supply to give away, but we still have some left available. And you put in, let me get my, I get the newsletter as well. Here we go. I'm gonna flash my newsletter at you. Yes, it's the Sugar Plum Mix, can you see it? It's you can, yeah, I don't know if you can. It's a lot of glare on my phone. But there, you can kind of see it there. And um, I'll do it here. Here, look at that. I'll put it on the this camera. There it is. Isn't it pretty? Look at how luscious. It's an dot mix. If you add, um, make an order of $35 or more, and you, uh, it's after discounts and before shipping, add Sugar Plum Thursday in your, um, in your order notes. And we'll add one of these Sugar Plum mixes that I made to your order. We have a new mix tomorrow and Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, the weekend mixes, a, a lot of these mixes, I bought new stuff, new seed beads and stuff that we don't carry on the site. We may eventually, but I've done some of them with uh, mix exclusive. So I think you're going to like them. So check the newsletters, make sure that happens uh, so you can see it. And I will see you guys next week. Um, <clears throat> we are taking Wednesday off because that's New Year's Day. So we'll be not here on, on the 1st of February of 2020, but we have a special treat. Janice will be here uh, a week from tomorrow. We'll be here on Friday, the 3rd of January with something you're not going to want to miss. So again, make sure you check out that newsletter. Thanks again so much, you guys. It was great to see you on this last broadcast. Have a happy and healthy remainder of 2019. And Janice and I will see you for the first broadcast of 2020. Thanks so much, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.